Okay, welcome to the No Spin News. I'm Bill O'Reilly. It is Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024. Stand up for your country. So I'm reading the letters to the editor in Newsday, which is my hometown paper, covers Long Island from the Queens line all the way out to Montauk. And the letters reflected Donald Trump's visit to the Diller family during the wake of Detective Jonathan Diller over the weekend. To me, that was a good thing. And the family openly acknowledged it gave them comfort that the former president went out of his way to fly to Long Island, spend time with the family, right? Now, that's not what the letters said. They were written by Trump haters, you could tell right off the bat, and I understand the mentality of the Trump hater. I got it. But the point was that Donald Trump shouldn't get any credit at all for giving comfort to the Diller family because he was directly responsible for January 6th and the suffering of police officers there. And I understand that Whoopi Goldberg did that on The View today. I don't watch that program, but that's what the report is. So I'm looking at this, I'm going, so your hatred for Donald Trump, the letter writers in Newsday and Ms. Goldberg, overrides any good that Donald Trump could ever do. He can't do anything good in your eyes. That is truly hatred. And that will be a factor in the November vote, no doubt about it. And there's no way to get those people away from the hatred. You cannot reason with them. If they don't see <clears throat> that a former president's visit to a grieving family is an honor, what are you going to do? So I, I thought I would point that out. It doesn't have anything to do with our reportage tonight, which begins with the talking points memo about your safety, public safety. So let's call it crime, no punishment. <clears throat> Happening all over the country, uh, mostly in urban centers, the rural areas and suburbs are calmer, but in the big cities run by liberal politicians, you are not safe, period. Boston is the best of them, and that's a fairly liberal city. And <clears throat> I am going to go up there and investigate why Boston has managed to maintain control of the criminal element, whereby New York, Boston's big rival, Philadelphia, D.C., Chicago, L.A., St. Louis, Baltimore, on and on and on and on, have not. So I don't know what Boston's doing, but I'm going to find out. Now, as we reported yesterday, <clears throat> the man who shot and killed 31-year-old Detective Jonathan Diller was a career criminal. We went over that in micro detail. If you missed it, Go to BillOReilly.com. We have the segments. We have the stats. If you're a concierge member, you can get the transcript. Okay? There is no two sides to that story. This man was dangerous, and the New York authorities let him out. Last April, a year ago, he was arrested for carrying an illegal firearm, even though he was a twice convicted felon and served time. In a year, that case wasn't even heard. And he's out on the street, and he gets another firearm and kills the detective. That's not a justice system. That's a collapse. And again, no two sides to the story. That's what that is. Now, perhaps the most powerful politician in New York State is a man named Char Carl Hasty. Carl Hasty. He is the assembly speaker in Albany, and he wields tremendous power. If you go up against Hasty, he can cut off your money. He can make your life miserable. So the leftists in Albany do what he says. Hasty admits flat out he is not going to enforce the laws of the state. Go. I just don't believe raising penalties is ever a deterrent on crime. There's already things in current law to uh, deal with people who assault uh, other people. That's not true. 
because the laws on the books are not being enforced and Hasty well knows it because that's the way Hasty wants it. So he is from the Bronx. And in the Bronx, you have many, many, many poor people. That's Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez's turf. Those poor people see life differently, even though they're being brutalized every single day by criminals. You see it differently. I'll get into that some other time. Now, in New York City, we reported on a man named Manuel Pagan, major narcotics dealer. He was arrested with 20,000 fentanyl pills. 20,000. You know how many people that can kill? You do. All right? You know what he got? He was, he pled guilty because they found him with the, with the pills. You know what he got? Two years in prison. And he'll be out in a year and a half. Two years. 20,000 pills. Fentanyl. Poison. Poison. Okay, how about the uh, two men who beat up the police officers in the Bronx on November 13th? 2023. <clears throat> Their case hasn't even been assigned yet. Okay, so it's April, right? That's four months plus. They're be due back in court June 3rd. On it, nothing's going to happen to them. Push it back, push it back. Why? You got it on videotape. I should have taken three weeks. Court date, bang. Doesn't want to do it. They don't want to do it. Even if you beat up a cop or kill a cop. It's so unbelievable. So now you present all of this to the president of the United States. He is well aware. Well, (laughs) that might be exaggerating it. He's been told about the violence in America's cities. And it's primarily driven by narcotics and guns because the drug gangs are armed. Here's what uh, his press secretary said last week. Go. This shooting is yet another painful reminder of the toll of gun violence, that what it's, what it's doing to inflict uh, on families and our communities and our nation. And that's why the president signed more than two dozen executive actions. That's why we're able to pass a bipartisan agreement to uh, deal with the gun violence that we're seeing in this country. Obviously, more work needs to be done. So it's always gun violence, not gun criminal violence. It's, always gun, it's the guns that are doing it, not the criminals. And we've heard that a million times in the Democratic Party. That is their line. And it's total malarkey. If President Biden cared at all about the issue, which he does not. And this comes under a long line of things he doesn't care about. The southern border being number one. If he cared about criminals using guns to hurt other Americans, there's an amazing amount of things that he could do about it. He does nothing. He didn't even talk about it. He didn't even call, as you know, the family, the Diller family on Long Island, when he was 35 miles away in Radio City yucking it up with Obama and Clinton uh, collecting money. They didn't care about it. Because the left, the far left, doesn't want to prosecute crimes. Because they feel the justice system is racist. That was, that's what hasty is all about. Hasty is, ah, whites control it, so I'm going to break it down. I'm going to blow it up. He wants to blow up the entire system. He's well on his way in New York. Okay, I'm going to give you one more stat, and then we'll, uh, we'll go to our next story. 80% of arrests in New York are not adjudicated fully. So that means even if you're caught, even if you're a thug who's caught stealing, mugging, assaulting, you have an 8 in 10 chance of getting off. There's no criminal justice system here. New York has collapsed. And that's a memo. All right, President Biden's schedule today has nothing on his schedule. He did talk with Xi, the dictator of uh, communist China, on the phone. Uh, I hope they had a nice conversation. Um, we don't know what they said. The White House will leak out certain things, but that's impossible to corroborate. So he had the phone call. On Friday, uh, Biden goes to Baltimore to look at the bridge that fell down. Um, He'll kick money into Baltimore, no doubt about it. That's what he always does. Everything is expensive these days, you know that. The government is printing trillions of dollars in consumer prices higher than ever. 
If the government continues its printing and spending, the dollar could continue its free fall and lose its coveted role as the world reserve currency. Let's hope that doesn't happen. But there are a few things you can do right now. American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your money, your retirement, your hard-earned savings against inflation by helping you diversify a portion of your portfolio into physical gold and silver. Start with a short phone call, and they can have physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or put inside your 401k or IRA. So please call or text them right now. Tell them Bill O'Reilly sent you. Call 877-444-GOLD, 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. Again, that's 877-444-GOLD, or text GOLD to 65532. All right, let's go to the mail. We got um, Kathleen. O'Reilly, I respectfully disagree about not forgiving some politicians. We should pray for wisdom and strength for our leaders to do what is right. To harbor an unforgiving stance keeps that anger within us. The battle is not yours, but God's. And I did say, Kathleen, I hope Jesus forgives them because it came off his words on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. But these people know what they're doing. That's the difference. The Roman centurions didn't. They do. Okay? Anyway, I hope if there is a judgment day, they are forgiven if they ask for it. That's one of the big things. You've got to ask for it. You've got to repent. Most of people will not do that. But my job is not to forgive them. It's to confront them. That's my job. That's why I was put on earth. To do that with facts. And I believe we do it well. Rick, it is fitting that on April Fool's Day, you hope Jesus forgives these politicians. I doubt that God will overlook Joe Biden's pronouncement that Easter was to be observed in the U.S. as Trans Recognition Day. I don't get involved with any of that. I know what Biden's doing. Okay, I've already addressed his Catholicism and abortion, and that's far more important. Cynthia High House, Portland, Oregon. Pretty sharp words you speak, O'Reilly. But sadly, the truth cannot be forgotten. Caught my attention a few days ago was a Democratic fundraiser in New York. President Obama Clinton appeared to cheer on Mr. Biden for fundraising purposes. That was a head scratcher. Why? This is a delicate question, but do guests that endorse at these events get a percentage of the money raised? No, no money changing hands. Both Bill Clinton and Barack Obama are dedicated Democrats, and they want Biden to win no matter how bad he is. And they hate Trump to boot. Dory Trumbo, Sisseton, South Dakota. The progressive leaders in New York and elsewhere will now give lip service to solving the problems in our country and may even pass a few meaningless and powerless laws. This will placate their followers enough to vote for them again. Well, that's what the border bill was about. That's exactly what it was about, Dory. That bill that Biden came up with and, and Schumer chucked out there, Chuck Schumer Chuck. Okay, um, that bill wouldn't have solved anything. Wouldn't have. So I read it. I know it. Daryl Frank, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Mr. O'Reilly, can the slain officer's family sue the governor and the attorney general? No, they're indemnified. You can't do that. Diane Week, St. Joseph, Minnesota. Thank you for your coverage of Detective Diller's murder and funeral over the weekend. I do appreciate you bringing all the issues surrounding the sentence murder to the forefront with your broadcast. As a mother who has lost a daughter, I am confident a call by President Biden to the Diller family would have caused more pain than his incessant reference to his own loss, the Bo Biden loss. The way this is handled, Diane, and I'm sorry about your loss, okay, is that the president's aides call the family. This is what Donald Trump did. You first, you call the family or the lawyers representing the family or whatever it may be and say, look, the president, the former president would like to visit, would like to call. Is that okay? 
and the family makes the decision. Biden didn't even try. Trump did that, and the family said, yes, we would appreciate a visit. That's what happened. Keith Palmer, Cornelia, Georgia. I greatly admire your knowledge, O'Reilly, and understanding of history, given that, at what point in the history of the United States would you estimate the percentage of good people was at its highest level? World War II. Beyond any doubt, World War II was the high point in noble behavior in the USA. Uh, Good question, by the way, Uh, Keith. Thank you. Janet, great no spin news, Bill. It was a pleasure to see Peter King, fine man. New York has become a sad symbol of the rot that is exploding in so much of our country. Largest city in the country, that's for sure. All right, we would like you to go to the BillOReilly.com store and pick up the Self-Reliance mugs. Great gift, especially for younger people. You can explain why self-reliance is so important. Okay? And if you sign up to be a premium member, you get a free mug or a book, whatever you want, as we discussed. Confronting the President's big, hot new book. Going to be out September 10th. Order it now. You'll get it first. You don't have to pay until we ship it to you. Killing Crazy Horse, another a massive bestseller, on sale for $12.95 hardback. So if you're looking for something to read, there it is. You will not be able to put it down. Word of the day, no flummery. F-L-U-M-M-E-R-Y. Flummery. Okay. When writing to me. <clears throat> now, if you are a pet owner, get a pen and a paper When we come back from the very short break, I'm going to give you some interesting information in a moment. Sorting through your expense tracking, estimated payments, and all those tax deductions can be overwhelming. It might even lead to a failure to file and failure to pay penalties that pile up on your tax debt. The attorneys at Tax Network USA have been lifesavers for many. Their team has successfully saved clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Whether you're in the hole for 10000 or starting at a $10 million debt, they are ready to help you. The expert attorneys and tax professionals at Tax Network USA are equipped to secure the best settlement for you and help you resolve all tax cases. So please go to TNUSA.com slash bill, or you can call 1-800-245-6000. These tax debt relief programs are expected to change, so get to them now. Visit TNUSA.com slash bill or call 800-245-6000. Tell them O'Reilly sent you. It is not too late to make the right choice. If you're distancing yourself from companies supporting the radical left, please choose AMAX Medicare Advisory Service. Whether it's prescription drug coverage, plan changes, exploring Medicare options, AMAC provides top-notch guidance from their experienced staff. Upholding pro-America values, AMAC has been helping people navigate Medicare for years. Their services are not only free of charge, but also free from any leftist agenda or corporate influence. AMAC stands as the conservative alternative to the AARP, earning its position as the number one group for freedom-loving individuals. So make the right choice for your health and values with AMAC. Choices do matter, and the choice is yours. Choose Medicare the right way with AMAC's Medicare Advisory Service. You can call them at 888-355-5605 during normal business hours, 888-355-5605, or online at amac.us forward slash trust. That's amac.us forward slash T-R-U-S-T. amac.us forward slash trust. Okay, let's go to the final thought of the day four months ago. Uh, My corgi, Holly the Terror Dog, uh, uh, was operated on to remove a brain tumor. She almost died. All right, the great vets out on uh, Long Island Vet Association out in Plainview, New York, uh, saved her life. And uh, the rehab on Holly is coming along very well. She's on medication, expensive medication, 
And her demeanor is almost back to normal with one exception. She follows me around everywhere. Now, she didn't used to do that, you know, but now she does. And I, when I'm studying Holly, and I call her a terror dog because when she was a puppy and we got her, uh, and she's a full bred corgi, she ate the living room. I mean, <laughs> one of those, you know. Um, but anyway, Holly knows. Holly knows somehow, instinctively, because dogs can't really process information, she knows what happened to her and how close she was. And now she's home in a very safe environment, which I have and everybody in my house is safe. That's my number one job on earth is to keep the people around me safe. And I do. All right. Now, it has cost an enormous amount of money to save Holly's life. And so I did not have pet insurance, all right? I didn't. I should have, um, and that was my mistake. So then we have investigated this because obviously um, would be 100 million American a pet. I mean, almost that many. It's crazy. Policy advisor, policy, P-A-W-L-I-C-Y, paw, licy, L-I-C-Y dot com. That is an advisory um, internet site for pets, and they give you different avenues of insuring your pet. Take what you want. But if your pet gets sick, and the vet was very, very honest to me, because you have to be, you can't be deceiving me, that's not a good course of action. Most pet owners would have put Holly down. And because they didn't have the resources to save her. They didn't have it, not $40,000. And it's going to be more because the medication is ongoing. Now, I couldn't do that. I, I, just, I, if I, I just couldn't. I don't even think about it. It wasn't even a hard decision for me. But I was thinking about people who didn't have resources, that if you have a pet that you love, particularly if the pet's not old, um, because the older the pet is and insurance gets out of control, you look around, it averages about $640 a year. Um, this is what our researchers come up with for dogs, about 400 bucks for cats. Um, that's what the insurance averages, uh, the cost. And, you know, I mean, you got to think about it. You definitely have to think about it. So I wanted to give you that information. We're very pleased Holly is uh, running around. I don't mind her following me around, but by the way, I... You know, it's, I looked at her. She's little, so I don't want to kick her. You know, but everywhere I go, there's, there's Holly. And looking at me going, and Holly knows. It's really an amazing thing what these pets know. You know, we have no idea, but they know a lot more than we think they know. Thank you for watching and listening to the No Spin News. See you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode, anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.